Hello there and welcome back to another edition of the Hot Lab Classic Remastered. This time we're taking a look at the 1991 Nissan Pulsar GTI-R. If you play in PAL regions, you'll know this is the Sunny. And if you were me, you were very confused by that because a Nissan Sunny to you was a white 1.4 base model. Not an all-wheel drive or rally homologation machine like this is with its giant deck wing. I'm very thankful it exists though. Bit of a shame that it only ever showed up in GT1 and 2 and never showed up again. It ironically ended up in Forza quicker than it ended up back in Gran Turismo. So yeah, it's a shame because I'd love this car. It's like the Mazda Familia, which we've had go around not too long ago. I, I love it, where it's just a mad sort of humdrum hatchback. It's great, you know, it's a car that, let's be honest, was driven mostly by pensioners, um, although my aunt had one, so she wasn't a pensioner at the time. Um, and then, yeah, you just sort of turn it into this and it's insane. Uh, this course competed in the World Rally Championship, uh, or at least the rally car did, which we will get to. Uh, first car, Tommy Mackinnon ever drove. That's uh, where he got his start in the WRC, so interesting to note. Uh, in terms of between this and the Familia, uh, this is definitely quicker than the Familia, or should be. Four-wheel drive, 420 horsepower, 1,122 kilos. The Familia made 357, I believe. So, uh, yeah, be interesting to see how this gets on. It is going to get six laps of the most sports land track in order to set the best time it possibly can. Our current leader is the Mitsubishi GTO LM edition. Set the time at 27.223. The Pulsar GTI-R is unlikely to beat that. In terms of the Pulsar GTI-R, uh, its rival is uh, the Familiar, the GTR. Set the time at 29.759. So... If this can get close to that, uh, we will deem it a success. And based on that first lap, it should be able to, because this does handle very nicely indeed. A little bit understeering. You can feel the understeer building on the uh, on the front axle, but still. So the interesting thing about this car, uh, the thing that I've sort of learned later on that I love about this car, is you can actually buy one of these as your first car in the game. It shows up in the used car dealer at the right time, which you're just starting out, and it can be had for under 10 grand. And don't get me wrong, it doesn't have 420 horsepower stock, but uh, it does have 220, I believe it is, and again, four wheel drive. It, it's a proper car, this. And in a world where people sort of swear by the, uh, the Skylines and the RX-7s for being your first car, I uh, very much prefer the uh, the Pulsar GTIR. I think this is uh, the one you should go for. 29.748, so it is slightly quicker than the Familia. Hopefully we can get a little bit more lap time out of it than that, because uh, this definitely feels like it can go quicker than that. And statistically, it definitely should be able to. But we will see. There's also the rally car to come round as well. Uh, which is a separate car thanks to a GT2 Plus mod, so we'll be seeing that later on, as we will with the uh, the Familia. I might run those back to back and we can do a little uh, rivalry between those two. That'll be fun. We'll give you back to back driving uh, talk on both of them as well, because I'll be honest, I don't remember how the 323 drove. <laughs> It's been a while since I've recorded any Hot Lap Classic, to be fair, and that one was uh, a little while ago, about 30-odd episodes ago, which is a month for you guys. It was probably about a month since I drove it. Yeah, this is... Um, it's quick. It's understeery, though. That is the thing that's hurting this car. Is It is... There's a lot of understeer on that front axle. You can sort of see it there as I'll turn in here. You know, it is very slow to change direction. Bit of a shame, because uh, statistically this really should have been hamming it up with like the Imprezas and stuff like that. But uh, as it sits, uh, it's not really going to be able to, or at least like the sort of Imprezas that I've run more recently. So, yeah, it's not bad. 
you know, it's definitely not bad. Between this and the 323, I would probably suggest this, just because it has more power. But you can sort of see it is just not massively pleasant to drive with the uh, the handling characteristics that it does possess. Uh, sector 2 there is a lot quicker, but sector 2 times probably should be ignored because, you know, you can have slower sector 1s and then you can go quicker in sector 2. Uh, it's hard to really break down the uh, the sector times, but uh, anyways, yeah, a 29.748 will place this in to 77th place. So it is very slightly quicker than the 323 GTR. It is quicker than the Audi TT Coupe Roof BTR Type 1 Percho 206. Uh, quicker than an Impreza STI Wagon Version 2. Slightly down on the Viper GTSR, the R32 GTR. Uh, wow, this is sort of relevant here. Evo 3, slower than the Evo 3, that's to be expected. It is quicker than the Evo 2, uh, quite significantly. It's also quicker than the 97 Impreza WRX Wagon. So, you know, in terms of the cars of its day, there's not really a lot. This is a 1991 model year. In terms of base model rally cars, there's nothing that old. Uh, other than the... Oh, the Celica GT4. It beats that. Very significantly, it beats the uh, the GT4 RC by as well. So, uh, yeah, both the uh, standard and the rally car version of that. So, yeah, pretty good showing, I'd say, from the Pulsar. But I think if it wasn't as understeer, it definitely could be challenging a lot further up. I could see... If this handled better, I could see a world where it could get a 29.4. But it's just too understeery to really look that far up the leaderboard. Anyways, that is it for this episode. Thank you all very much for watching. Join me next time when I will be driving something completely different. Until then, farewell.